welcome to our new video on basic microbiology lecture 2 and in this video of lecture 2 we are going to discuss about bacterial cell or bacterial colony concept that means what are the difference between bacterial cell and bacterial colonies next we will discuss the structure of bacterial cell that means within a bacterial cells what are the components are there we will discuss and what are their functions all we will discuss in this section and next topic is size of bacterial cell that means what are the size of bacterial cell in comparison to human cell and in comparison to different types of viruses or different types of uh, genetic materials or anything so we will compare the bacterial cell and by which we can see those bacterial cells okay so next and the last topic is shape of bacterial cells so what are the shape of bacterial cells like a bacillus shape or coccus shape and their arrangement whether they are form single single form or whether they are present in double form or whether they are present in <clears throat> in a chain or in a cluster so depending on their shape and arrangement we can differentiate the bacterial cells okay so all this topic we will discuss in this lecture 2 okay so let's start so the first thing is bacterial cell or colony concept okay so here this is a petri plate this is a petri plate where bacterial colonies are grows so each of these dots each of these dots are one colony okay so what is a bacterial colony so suppose this is a locality this is a locality and within a locality many houses are there so this is a house this is another house this is another house this is another house this is another house so in different house in all these different houses in a single house the members are there all are called their they are belong to same family okay so <clears throat> in a single house all the members are their family member because they are be, they belong to same family in the same way for bacterial colonies in a single colony in a single colony if we uh, <clears throat> zoom a single colony we can see in a single colony many microorganisms are there many bacteria or bacterial cells are there in a single colony like 10 millions or 10 to the power 7 individual cells are present in a single colony and all these single colonies are came from a same species they are belong to the same species because they are uh, present in a same family because they are produced or generated from a single bacterial cell suppose suppose in a petri plate one bacterial cell is present was present and then <clears throat> it divide to two bacterial cell and then this bacterial cell divide to another two different cell this bacterial cell divide to another two different cells so from this single bacteria in a colony all these bacterial cells produce different many bacterial cells in a single colony and all they come from a single ancestor okay so they are all belong to the same species so within a bacterial colony same <coughs> same micro same species of microorganisms are there so within a colony many microorganisms are there and all the microorganisms or all the bacteria are within a belong to a same species okay so this is the concept of bacterial colony and bacterial cell and for our any experiment when we uh, experiment or when we count the bacterial cell <coughs> for our any experiment that time we do not use the ba term bacterial cell the count of bacterial cell we use the term bacterial colony because we cannot count the bacterial cell because it is very minute very small and they're present in huge amount so that's why we can't count the bacterial cell we can count the bacterial colony and we called it colony forming unit so we called it colony forming 
unit okay cfu we denote it as a sorry we denote it as a colony forming unit okay so so this is the main concept of bacterial cell and bacterial colony so move on to the next concept that is structure of bacterial cell that is under the cell organization so what is the bacterial cell structure so now let's move on to it so bacterial cell bacteria uh, we <coughs> bacterial cell is composed of mainly three, three components that is cytoplasm that is the uh, inside the bacterial cell here you can see this is the inside of bacterial cell the whole is a cytoplasm and next that is cell envelope that covered the bacterial cytoplasm and that another one is a external structure that is the that is present outer side of the cell envelope like this this one this flagella or pili structure these are the external structure of bacteria so bacterial structure is composed of three main components that is cytoplasm cell envelope and external structure so within a cytoplasm main two types of things are there that is cytosol that is the liquid portion here the liquid all these these are the liquid portion known as cytosol and the solid portion solid things which are present that is the internal structure and within the internal structure one thing is nucleoid where dna is present this is the nucleoid where dna is present that is the genetic material and another one is ribosome here these are the ribosomes these are the ribosomes where protein synthesis occur and another thing which is present in cytoplasm that is plasmid this is the plasmid this is the plasmid this is the plasmid that is a extra chromosomal dna structure it is it is also contained dna but it is not the genetic material okay and in our another video we will uh, explain this plasmid structure and function differently okay in detail and another one that is inclusion inclusion bodies so inclusion bodies this is the inclusion bodies where bacteria stores some foods like polysaccharide phosphates many types of foods are there for their future okay and the cytoskeleton cytoskeleton means the uh, <coughs> it uh, provide this uh, it uh, control the shape of the bacterial cell okay regulate the shape of the bacterial cell okay or protect it so this is the whole cytoplasm whole cytoplasm structure okay and which one covered this cytoplasm structure is known as the cell envelope and in cell envelope that is present the cell membrane and cell wall so <clears throat> mainly the cytoplasm is covered by the cell membrane so what is cell membrane so cell membrane covered this this cover this portion this cover is the cell membrane structure okay and outside of this cell membrane the component is the cell wall that is that white portion white portion or outside this white portion this is the cell wall okay this is the cell wall okay and what is the external structure external structure within an external structure uh, we can say the first one is the flagella so this is a flagella which help the cell for movement or motility okay and the pili structure here this one is the pili structure pili helps the bacteria for bacterial mating like uh, bacterial uh, dna or bacterial nucleoid or bacterial genetic material can be transferred from one bacterium to another bacterium suppose this is a bacteria and this one is a another bacteria so uh, for their bacterial mating the <coughs> in some bacteria the uh, genetic material that is dna can be transferred from one bacterium through pili to another bacterium so this process can be done by pili and also pili helps in attachment to another bacteria or another surfaces okay so this is the role of pili and another thing that is uh, contained in the external structure that is glycocalyx glycocalyx are the sticky uh, components which are present outside of the cell wall that is known as the 
pili structure uh, sorry glycocalyx and within a glycocalyx glycocalyx can be a slime layer or capsule if the glycocalyx is uh, contained in <clears throat> very tightly then it is called the capsule and if contained very loosely then it is called slime layer okay so glycocalyx main role of glycocalyx is to stick to a surface so it helps the bacteria to attach any surfaces okay so these are the all structure and now we will see the bacterial cell in detail so this are the pilis here we can see these are the pilis which help the bacteria for transfer of genetic material from one bacterial cell to another bacterial cell okay and next that is the glycocalyx this uh, sky color or sky color thing is the glycocalyx that is the sticky portion for attachment and next is the cell wall this is the cell wall which gives a shape and it protect the bacterial cell or it act as a protection layer okay next inside the cell wall the present component is the cell membrane this is the cell membrane so outside of the cytoplasm the cell membrane is present which is a lipid bilayer which is a semi permeable membrane by uh, this semi permeable membrane selective components can go outside of the cell or go inside into the cell okay so selective components can be transferred from that so that's why it is called semi permeable membrane okay so this is a cell membrane and then we can see in a cytoplasm nucleoid is present which is with dna so here the dna or genetic material is present and next component is inclusion bodies so here the storage components are present or polysaccharide many things are stored in this components okay and next is plasmid so this is the plasmid that is a <coughs> extra chromosomal dna material here some genes are present which help the bacteria to resistant from external some uh, external uh, factors okay or to be virulent okay so it helps the bacteria virulence okay so another thing that is the flagella so flagella helps the bacteria for their movement okay so now move on to the more detailed structure so here we can see so first thing is the glycocalyx so what is glycocalyx we will see here a coating or layer of molecules external to the cell wall and uh, it is present in the cell wall outside of the cell wall that is a coating or layer it is a sticky layer and it serves protective adhesive and receptor functions and it may fit tightly or be very loose and diffuse so if it is uh, present in tight form that is known as a capsule and if it is present in loose form that is known as slime layer okay and then that is a bacterial chromosome or nucleoid so here this is the component so this is the bacterial nucleoid structure so it is a compo it composed of condensed dna molecules okay here the dna molecules are present that is the genetic material and dna directs all genetic and heredity of the cell and codes for all proteins okay so next one is the pili so this one is the pili and elongated hollow appendages used in transfer of dna to other cell this nuclear uh, this, this nuclear or genetic material or this plasmid can be transferred from one dna sorry from one bacterial cell to another bacterial cell by this pillar structure the process is known as conjugation okay so next is plasmid so what is plasmid plasmid is a double stranded dna circle containing extra gene here also some genes are present which protect the bacteria or give some extra advantages to the bacteria next one is the ribosome tiny particles composed of protein and rna that are the sites of protein synthesis so this is the place where protein synthesis is performed okay so next one is actin cytoskeleton long fibers of proteins that encircle the cell just inside the cell membrane and contribute to the shape of the cell so it gives the shape a, a specific shape of the bacterial cell okay so next one is the flagellum or flagella 
so it is a specialized appendix attached to the cell by a basal body that holds a long rotating filament and the movement pushes the cell forward and provide motility so it basically gives the bacterial cell its motility it helps in motility okay next one is the cytoplasm so it is the water based solution filling the enter cell so this is the cytoplasm and endospore so what is endospore it is a dormant body formed within some bacteria that allow for their survival in adverse condition so in adverse condition some <clears throat> bacteria suppose uh, some bacteria are placed in a 75 degree celsius environment or in a very dry environment so in that time in that adverse condition for their survival bacteria go to their dormant state okay that means they do not uh, divide or do not reproduct so that's time that is called the dormant state so that uh, <clears throat> that portion is known as the endospore structure of bacteria so when after when after some times when the bacteria get a favorable condition that time that time that bacteria from their dormant state come to their favorable vegetative body or normal bacterial cell okay so this is a survival strategy of the bacteria okay so next is the outer membrane so extra membrane similar to cell membrane but also containing lipopolysaccharide so outer membrane basically present outside of the cell wall mainly basically present it is mainly present in the gram negative bacteria okay so we will all discuss about the gram positive gram negative bacteria in our next videos when we discuss about the cell wall of bacteria okay so outer membrane and contain flow of materials and portions of it and are toxic to mammals when released okay so what is cell membrane or plasma membrane so plasma membrane all we discussed here that is a thin sheet of lipid and protein that surrounds the cytoplasm and controls the flow of materials into and out of the cell pool so the plasma membrane basically composed of lipid and protein which is known as a lipid bilayer and it is not a solid structure okay it is a fluid structure and it is a semi permeable by it uh, many uh, many selective materials can go into or go out of the cell okay and last thing uh, the next thing is the cell wall so it is a semi rigid structure that causing the uh, that provide structural support and shape for the cell okay and last thing that is oh sorry uh, another thing that is uh, inclusion bodies that is that is a stored it is a storage compound where uh, bacteria store their nutrients such as like fat phosphate or glycogen deposited here okay and last thing is fimbri these are the fimbri structure so fimbri that is a fine hair like bristle uh, extending from the cell surface that help in addition to other cell and surfaces so it, it basically helps to uh, adhere to the diff other another cells or to another surfaces so it help in addition okay so this is all about the function of cell structure components okay so more specifically here we can say that this plasma membrane structure so what is their function so fun the function of the plasma membrane is to selectively permeable barrier so it can selectively per permeable for many components like it can only support selective components to inside or to outside of the cell and it can act as a mechanical boundary or mechanical barrier of the cell and nutrient and waste transport and location of many metabolic processes like respiration and photosynthesis and detection of environmental cues for chemotaxis okay so next one is the gas vacuole so what is the function of gas vacuole so it provides the buoyancy for floating in aquatic environment for in a aquatic environment for uh, floating of the bacteria it provide uh, it helps in floating of the bacteria okay and next one is the ribosome so the main function of the ribosome is to uh, helps in protein synthesis it gives the place for protein synthesis and next one is the inclusion bodies 
so that is the storage of carbon phosphate and other substances and nucleoid means localization of genetic material that is dna and next one is the periplasmic space so what is periplasmic space periplasmic space means here you can see this one this is this one is the cell wall and this one is the cell membrane okay so in between the space this space is the known as the periplasmic space this is the periplasmic space okay so what is so what is the role of periplasmic cells so it contains hydrolytic enzymes and binding proteins for nutrient processing and uptake so if we get a complex uh, nutrient then in the periplasmic space many hydrolytic enzymes are there which break down those complex components and uptake the more easy or more uh, <clears throat> soluble or more uh, simple compound inside the cell okay so next one is the cell wall so what is the role of cell wall it provides shape and protection from osmotic stress and next one is the capsule and slime layer so they are the glycocalyx so what is the role of them so resistance to phagocytosis and adherence to surfaces so they helps in adhere to different surfaces because there's a sticky layer okay so next one is the fimbria and pili so their role is basically attachment to surfaces that is the role of the fimbri and bacterial mating in bacterial mating helps it helps uh, pili helps in bacterial mating for transfer of the <coughs> genetic material from one cell to another okay so next one is the flagella so their role is in motility and last one is the endospore so their survival under the role is to survival under harsh environmental condition okay so these are the role of bacterial structure and their function <coughs> next is the size of bacterial cells so what are the size of bacterial cell so here this is the size range is there this is the size range is there so in human eye our eyesight is we can uh, we can uh, see any object which are more than versus uh, whose size are more than 1 millimeter or 0 0.1 millimeter so if a object is uh, less than 0 0.1 or 1 millimeter then we cannot see those uh, things by our normal human eye okay so that things we have to see by the light microscope okay and the light microscope range is 100 micrometer to 1 micrometer so all the microorganisms we can see by light microscopes that are 100 micrometer to 1 micrometer okay so in hydro, uh, 100 micrometer range we can see the colonial algae that is amoeba but in uh, 10 micrometer range we can see the red blood cell that is a human cell white blood cell also the human cells but the most bacteria which we are discussing here most bacteria fall between 1 and 10 micrometer in size so these are the bacterial size that is the 1 micrometer to 10 micrometer in this in this uh, size in between this all the bacterial sizes are there so rickettsia like rickettsia bacteria or rod shaped bacteria like e coli or coccus shaped bacteria that is the staphylococci all are present in this size range that is 1 micrometer to 10 micrometer okay so in this size range all the bacteria are present so suppose <coughs> one bacteria one bacteria uh, that is uh, don't have any cell wall that is the mycoplasma we cannot see those mycoplasma by this light microscope because their range is in nanometer range so we have to see all the mycoplasmas and all the viruses by the electron microscope because their range are in nanometer range that is 200 from 200 nanometer to 1 nanometer we have to see those microorganisms uh, like viruses or microplasmas by the electron microscope so one thing we, i have to add here that is the <coughs> how we can convert uh, this uh, nanometer or micrometer or millimeter into meter so one millimeter here one millimeter is equal to 10 to the power minus 3 meter okay and 
one micrometer one micron or one micrometer one micrometer is equal to 10 to the power minus 6 meter okay and one nanometer means one nanometer means 10 to the power minus 9 meters so here you can remember uh, remember it by it uh, its difference in it's reduced the size by minus 3 so in meter uh, in millimeter that is 10 to the power minus 3 in micrometer that is 10 to the power minus 6 in nanometer that is 10 to the power minus 9 okay so this is the size range okay so by electron microscope we can see the viruses and microplasmas also the diameter of dna is 1 nanometer we can also see it by electron microscope okay so this is the size range and which are used to see the microorganisms that means the human cells or the bacterial cells or the viruses okay so now move on to next so here also you can compare the human hair or human cells with the bacterial cells so how fine structure of bacterial cells the different structures of bacterial cells and human cells so this is the human hair structure we all know human hair is a very thin uh, uh, very thin in size so this is the human hair so in comparison to human hair these are the bacterial structures or human uh, body cells so if we zoom this portion if we zoom this portion in 2000x then we can see this uh, <coughs> picture so here this is a ragged pollen that is the allergen and this is a lymphocyte that is a white blood cell and this is a this is the red blood cell and here very small things we can see these are the bacterial cells there so if we if we further zoom this portion then we can see this if we zoom this at 20,000 X then we can see these are the bacterial cells this is the bacterial cell that is the E. coli that uh, size is like 2 micrometer okay this is another bacteria that is staphylococcus that is also 1 micrometer in size okay and the viruses size are here this is more small that is Ebola virus or rhinovirus they are very small compared to the bacterial cells so this is the view of human cells bacterial cells or viruses okay so this is the size of the bacterial cells and in next we will discuss about the shape of the bacterial cell so the main the main shapes main five shapes are there for bacterial cells first one is the bacillus that is a rod shaped and coccus that is a spherical shape and spiral that is a that is under the spiral there is a vibrio shape or spirillum or spirochetus so under the bacillus so here also we can see there is a coccus shape that is the round shaped and this is the <coughs> rod shaped that is a bacillus so in between these two one structure is also there that is the coccobacillus it is not uh, totally coccus or totally rod so that is known as coccobacillus okay another thing is that is bacillus sorry that, that is a vibrio that is a comma shaped and this is the spirillum or spiral shaped and the spirochetus like this okay so now we will discuss the arrangement of the bacterial cells suppose a bacillus cell is always present in their single form so it is all normally called as bacillus so if this bacillus or rod shaped bacteria always present or arranged them in a diploid structure then it is called the diplobacillus if they present in their chain form then it will be called the streptobacillus okay so next in for coccus bacteria or spherical bacteria if they present in single form we can say that is a coccus bacteria if they present in double form double arrangement then we will call it as a diplococcus if they present in tetrad form or 
group of four then we call them tetrad and if they form or present in a cluster form then we can call them call them that is a staphylococcus and if they present in a chain form then we will call them as a streptococcus okay and if the present in vibrios so these are not the arrangement so these are all the arrangement of bacteria okay so different arrangements so here we all discuss about the shapes and arrangements so five types of shapes are there bacillus coccus spiral in under the spiral that is the vibrio spirulum or spirochetes five types of shapes are there and their arrangements like single diplobacillus or streptobacillus and here also the single diplobacillus tetrad staphylococcus for cluster and chain form that is a streptococcus okay so these are the shape and arrangement and in our next we can see this also they are the uh, coccus rod shaped like this vibrio like this and spiral shape like this and spirochetes like this okay so here these are the pictures of original cells okay so in our next video or next lecture 3 we will discuss in our next video that is the bacterial cell wall and bacterial cell membrane structure in detail okay so in this video we will stop this video here okay so thank you for watching this video